Hey everyone, Nick Dearbertis here, teaching you financial modeling. And today I'm gonna to talk about the first project in the class, giving a quick overview on some additional material we need to complete the project, as well as introducing the project itself. So this project um, is trying to work in, uh, mainly cash flow modeling is the main um, work involved in the project and cash flow modeling is something you need to do in the majority of financial models so it's a good uh, area to focus on first um, and so you know this uses pretty much the same concepts as the retirement model uh, you know it's still ultimately a time value of money problem but we're going to be approaching a capital budgeting setting instead of a you know, personal finance retirement setting. Um, so we just need to quickly look at some stuff which should definitely be reviewed for you. Uh, you know, it's just some basic microeconomics uh, which is going to be involved in this capital budgeting problem. Um, so, you know, we're really just, you know, talking about supply and demand here, which, um, you know, everyone, should have covered this in their econ courses um, that basically, um, you know, as uh, you know, there's an intersection between supply and demand, um, and that's going to be the equilibrium uh, price and quantity that's going to be sold for a given product. Um, and then if you um, have a decrease in supply, that's going to be uh, this entire curve shifting to the left. Um, then that's going to then shift up the price and shift down the quantity. Um, whereas if you get more supply, then it's going to shift down the price and up the quantity. And the reverse is true for demand. Um, as demand uh, increases, pushing the line out to the right, um, then the price is going to go up um, as well as the quantity. Um, and then if you push the uh, demand down, then both um, price and quantity are going down. Um, so uh, when we think about the revenue that we're going to get um, as a producer, um, it's going to be whatever the price was times the quantity. Um, but it's important to consider that uh, you know, whatever you produce is not necessarily all going to be sold. It has to match up with whatever the demand is. So the quantity that's actually going to get purchased is the minimum of the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. Because if there's a ton of production capacity, but people just don't want the product, well, that low demand for the product is going to drive the quantity. Uh, whereas it could be the opposite. There's a ton of demand. Demand is really high, but suppliers just aren't able to produce very much. And so then the supply is going to be the constraint here. Um, and so it's just the minimum of the two is ultimately going to be the quantity transacted. Um, and then um, there's one um, gotcha we got, we have to think about uh, as we go to complete this project, ultimately we're going to need to be calculating MPV in this project. Um, and MPV um, does work slightly differently. Uh, NumPy's MPV uh, works slightly differently than the MPV function in Excel. Um, and that difference is just about when it considers as the first cash flow that you're passing it. So in Excel, uh, whatever cash flow you pass to it first for the MPV function is considered period one. Um, so if you had, um, uh, you know, whatever you have there is going to get ultimately discounted in determining the present value. And if you want to have a period zero, you have to just add that separately outside the MPV. Uh, conversely, uh, NumPy's MPV function treats the first cash flow as period zero. So if you uh, want to have a period zero cash flow, it would be first, and then your period one cash flow would be second, and you just pass them all in the list to the MPV function. Um, so then if you don't have a period zero cash flow, your first cash flow is coming in period one, well, then you would just want to add a zero as the first element in the list uh, so that it's considering that 
um, second item in the list as period one. Um, so that's the main thing to be careful about. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, uh, it works essentially the same between the two. So then jumping over to the description of the project. Um, so again, this is kind of a classic capital budgeting problem where we have, um, you know, these uh, fixed assets that we can buy here, it's machines, and those fixed assets uh, buy us production capacity such that we can produce a certain number of units. Um, and then producing those units has a variable cost associated with it. Um, and you can sell them to earn a revenue on those. Um, and then uh, also coming into this problem is uh, thinking about the demand as well. Uh, there is going to be demand in here and you can never sell uh, more than the demand, right? The, the quantity uh, purchased is going to be the minimum of supply and demand. And basically you have a choice in each year whether you're going to buy a machine, spend your budget on buying a new machine which can up your production capacity, or instead you can spend that money on advertising and then advertising is going to increase the demand for your product. Um, so, you know, here you can control whether you're uh, upping the demand or upping the supply. And, you know, the, the point of the model is, um, you know, it could be used to find that balance of demand and supply that's going to maximize your MPV. Um, and there's a few uh, assumptions that we can work in here to simplify our model. Um, so one is I'm allowing you to assume that you know, the model just goes to 20 years, nothing is gonna happen after 20 years. Um, and then we can also assume that um, you know, we're paying for either this machine or this advertising in every single year, um, even after all of the, you know, the project is over, the machines have shut down, zero cash is coming in, just assume that you're still you know, paying that cost of advertising. Um, that's just, you know, to make it a little bit simpler on you. Um, and then, you know, definitely make sure that changing around the inputs, the outputs are going to change like you would think that change in the input would cause. Um, and another simplifying assumption is we can assume that um, fractional phone sales are fine. Uh, you don't need to do rounding on uh, any quantities. Um, just leave it as the fractional amount. Um, so then we have these inputs to the model here. Um, you know, most of the things we just talked about, um, the number of phones the machines can produce, the number of machines that you're going to purchase, the life of the machine, uh, the price of each phone, the scrap value of the machine, uh, you know, when you sell it or when, once the machine is out of life, you can sell it for a scrap value. Um, so that's what this is. Um, the price of the machine or you know we're making it simple by just making the advertising cost the same it's just either you spend your budget on the machine or you spend it on advertising in that given year um, the cost of producing a single phone uh, variable cost um, the initial demand the um, demand growth for each advertisement that you do um, and the interest rate um, and then the main outputs we're looking for from this model are the cash flows year over year, as well as the MPV of those cash flows. Um, and then I have also included a bonus problem here. So, you know, for the typical student, I would not uh, recommend going after the bonus problem. Really only if you've already finished up your project and you have extra time and you want to add additional learning, that's when you go for the bonus project or problem. Uh, because it is going to require basically going out on your own and learning some stuff which we don't have time to cover in the course um, and working an additional um, structure into your existing model. Um, so this uh, part is all about doing the optimization. It's about, you know, okay, now we have this model which has all this structure. Now, how do we actually find, you know, what should be the... Um, number of machines that we purchase um, you know based on um, the demand and the supply trying to maximize our MPV um, 
And a key thing about this project is you are going to submit basically two entirely separate submissions for this. One is an Excel model and one is a Python model. So you're doing the entire model end to end in both Excel and Python. Um, so that's definitely a fair amount of work. Definitely start early on this. Um, this project uh, in the past has been the one where people have struggled the most just because of the learning curve involved in um, and mainly the Python side of just getting started over there. Um, so for the Excel exercise, make sure you start from the template. We'll look at that in a moment. Um, ensure that everything is referenced all the way through. Everything should flow from inputs to calculations to outputs. Um, and be sure not to change the location of any of the inputs or outputs, and you'll submit the Excel workbook for that. For Python, um, start from the Jupyter Notebook template, um, and uh, I should be able to run the model uh, from the top to the bottom, just running all the cells in order and get the expected output. Um, definitely don't change the model inputs. Um, and you um, need to have certain variables defined um, for the auto grader to pick up your answers. So have the cash flows variable defined as, you know, the, the years one through 20 cash flows, which should be numbers, it should not be formatted strings, and have the MPV variable defined as the number. Again, it should be a number of the MPV, not a formatted string, but when you show your results, you should be showing a formatted result. So you've got to uh, be able to handle both, keep the numbers in the original variable, show the formatted. Um, and then this project has kind of the standard grading structure, 60% uh, accuracy, 20% readability, 10% formatting, 10% following the template, and then you can earn up to 5% on the bonus. Now what I do for a number of the projects, including this one, is to give you some answers so you're not just completely in the dark on this. Um, so if you have these values for the inputs, um, then these should be the answers that you get as a result. Um, now it's important that you know once you've built out your model and you're able to match this, don't just stop there. You've got to go and start changing around your inputs and make sure that things change in the way you expect. If you go and change an input and just nothing at all changes, uh, then you know there's probably an issue where you've actually hard-coded the value somewhere in the calculation and it's not actually using the input. So that would definitely cause you to lose points on accuracy. Make sure to check for those kinds of mistakes. Um, so that's the overview of the project. Um, and then we can look at the templates. Um, so here is the Excel template. And so you'll see the inputs uh, here on the top left on the inputs and outputs tab. So don't change the name of this tab. Don't change the location of any of these cells. Um, but you can mess around with the formatting if you don't like the way that I have formatted it. Um, and as you do all your calculations, make sure you reference these cells uh, because I will be changing these cells around in the grading and expecting that your outputs here change appropriately. Um, so then the outputs section is below that and you see the yellow highlighted cells are where you need to put your answers. Um, and again, those should be referenced back from your calculations so that everything flows through from the inputs to the calculations, which could be on other tabs, back over to the outputs on this tab. Um, and here we would put the MPV and then each cash flow one by one. Um, and again, do not move the locations of any of these cells. Uh, and then coming over to the, um, the Python um, template, uh, Jupyter Notebook template. Um, so you can see here, um, it's got this top section where you should add your description of the model. Um, and here you can kind of follow this structure to also add a table of contents on your model that allows you to uh, navigate through the different portions. So make sure to fill that out with your sections. Um, and then, uh, you know, set up. You don't want to remove these, but you can add additional imports and things if you want. Um, 
inputs here, you don't want to change the name of this class and you don't want to change the name of this variable in your final submission. Um, and so, um, and you also don't want to change the names of any of these uh, variables either. Um, so, or, or these either. Anything that was there already, you should not change the name. Uh, you know, you, you can add your own variables if you want. Um, and they can have whatever names, but just don't change any of the names of the variables that are there already. Um, and then here, you know, I'm you know saying what you need to set these variables to. So just make sure that you do actually indeed set these variables um, and that you, you know, delete this out and just put, uh, you know, what this variable actually is in this final cell. And it should be all linked through such that um, if you change the inputs in your model, it's going to change the values we're seeing for these variables as well. Um, so that's an overview of the first project. Um, so definitely uh, get started early on this. Um, and please do feel free to ask me questions about it. So thanks for listening and see you next time.